Yo, it's Riker. What is up, you amazing, beautiful people? I hope you're doing well wherever you are at, whatever time of day or night you're doing and watching this video, because in today's video, we will be reviewing the AMX50B as it was requested by one of you guys, so I will go ahead and throw your comment on screen. That guy did request this. I managed to get it done in at least one day. This is the only part I have left to do. If you guys do have a request of a tank you would like me to review, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below, and I will get to that eventually. But if you do end up liking the video, smash the like button and leave a comment in your favorite part of the video or anything in general down in the comment section below. Subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're always notified when I upload a new video. Without further ado, let's dive right into the stats of this vehicle. So right away for the survivability of this tank, you have 2,544 hit points. It's okay, it's not the absolute best, not the absolute worst for a heavy tank at tier 10 in my opinion. It's decent and you could work with it. The main armor for the turret and the hull, the front of it you can get some bounces just have to be careful of the cheeks of the turret i'll go over the armor more in the armor inspector later in this video but the sides and rear you basically have no armor at all the view range i do feel like is pretty good for a heavy tank at least i have not run into any troubles with it so far it has been doing me very good in the concealment it's a heavy tank and this is a tall heavy tank at that so you basically have no concealment you guys will have to be very cautious of how you position yourself if you want to be spotted or if you don't want to be spotted and all that stuff and upon firing while stationary you might as well have hard cover right next to you because you are going to get spotted instantly if you aren't already while moving or already stationary as you look at the other stats and for the fire, for the damage per minute, it is not too bad. It's almost 3,000. It's at 2,925. I feel like that is pretty good for a clip. I mean, obviously, it's not like god tier, but it is pretty good in my opinion. The reload time is 18.61 seconds. So during that time, you want to have your team around you or at least get behind cover to where no enemy will rush you in that 18-second time period. In between each shell you do fire... You get three shells in a clip, you fire one, you have to wait three seconds before you can fire the next one. For the average penetration, for the AP it is 270, for APCR it is 357, for high explosive it is 72. Not too bad right off the start, might have a little trouble with the AP here and there on certain vehicles, so I do run calibrated shells and we will get more into that during the equipment, but you can make do with what you have. It's not like you can't pin anything at all, you can still pin most of the tier 10 tanks you will come up against for the average damage for the ap is 400 for apcr 340 and for high explosive 515 which is honestly pretty decent in my opinion it's obviously like i have been saying throughout it's not top of the line but it is pretty good for the aiming time and dispersion i don't feel like is too bad this dispersion might be a little bit but the aiming time i have no problem with at all for the gun turn limit for up your gun elevation will be 12 degrees and for gun depression it will be 10 so you do have 10 degrees of gun depression and that is very good as you guys know i love my gun depression and for your movement speed you are extremely quick like this this is a cross between a heavy and a medium you are a heavium and you should usually push with your medium tanks most if not all the time as you can see, going forward, you're going 50, reverse 15, and for average speed, it is 38. And overall, terrain crossing capacity, all the stats, you are just highly mobile and you can go very quick. The only problem that you might have is the haul turn rate. It's a little slow during that, at least I feel like it is in the gameplay. I don't turn quick enough, but you can make do with that because obviously you're going like 50 kilometers an hour you could just circle around some kind of obstacle back into cover now for the equipment as i told you guys earlier for the penetration i do end up running calibrated shells i was running the improved ventilizer just to get that damage per minute up but eventually i realized it wasn't really worth it and i'd rather have some more penetration just to confirm the shots and be more confident when i am shooting yes you could make do without it it will be a little bit more difficult, but you will have that extra damage per minute. And like I said, for in the last review, for the defense system and the improved modules, that's up to you guys, your own personal opinion. Like I said, most tanks, I kind of run the same loadout, just slight variations. And you guys adapt 
to your own play style. You guys could use this as a template, but adapt to how you like to play. So I just run defense systems, no personal reason, just I'd rather run that than the other one. And for this one, your, your concealment already sucks. Don't waste your time on the camouflage net. Use the improved optics to increase that view range so you could help spot for your TDs or anybody in back trying to get shots. Because like I said, this tank is a heavy M and you most likely want to be pushing with the medium tanks. It just depends on the situation, the map, and the lineup. Then for the next one, obviously I'm running gun lane drive. I usually run this on almost every single tank, but recently in the gameplay I am now real realizing that supercharge might actually be the way to go because there have been some shots where I have shot, but they just disappear. Nothing happens, and I'm pretty sure this will help with that supercharge but for now I am still going to use enhanced gun laying drive I will, I will still have to experiment with that a little bit but for now like I said I'm sticking with this one and for the next one the tank doesn't really have that much armor to begin with it I mean there are a few spots that you could work with if you guys want to use enhanced armor you go ahead be my guest but for now I am using improved assembly just to get the extra HP and next, I am going to be using the engine accelerator just to improve the average speed, the power to weight ratio, the haul turn rate, and engine power. I just love adding that extra bit of mobility in almost everything instead of just in one thing in the haul turn rate. Get almost a little bit of everything for the mobility increased. And for the next one, vertical stabilizer, again, with this one up here, gun laying drive. I just love the aiming time, being able to snap shots off and rely on that. But honestly... Refined gun might also be good on this tank with this like I said with the supercharge There have been a few instances where shots should have gone in but nothing absolutely happens might just be ghost shells And I might be overreacting but I'd have to experiment with that more and let you guys know at a later date But personally still use vertical stabilizer and for the these last two honestly It's up to you guys your personal preference like this is my personal preference the toolbox the 30% module repair kit repair speed i just rather have that be able to get back in the action as quick as possible and if i am trapped get out of the lane of fire as quick as possible and then this one for the high-end consumables i want that 30 percent duration so i can use that engine boost so i could get to places quicker and it could last a little bit longer and i could get there faster than the enemy can for the ammunition i run 36 ap 9 apcr and 12 he AP, self-explanatory, that is the main ammo that you guys are going to be using, so you want more of that than the other ones. HE, you're not really going to have too many opportunities, but when they are presented, you always want to carry a little bit so you can get that high damage shots in. And APCR for when you absolutely have to guarantee the shot, and that shot can mean the win or the loss of that entire battle. For the provisions, I always use the coffee and croissant, along with the cans. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that, you guys. Just know the canned thing that starts with the P. Let me know down in the comment section below if you know how to pronounce that at all. And I also use the improved fuel just to add, like I said earlier, a little bit of a speed boost in everything. And I use these food and drink consumables mainly just to improve everything up by a bit and just overall improve my tank as a whole. And then for consumables, as usual, I don't really change it out from when I first get it. The only thing that I think I changed out was to get the repair kit because I'd rather have that than the first egg kit or the automatic fire extinguisher because in the stats I think I went over that but you only have a 15% chance of catching fire when the engine is hit so you don't really need that and if you do you have the multi-purpose restoration pack and this pack is pretty much self-explanatory everybody should be running this pack because it pretty much works in every department. I feel like the engine power boost is another good option because you want to be able to get in position faster and beat the enemy two spots or circle death them. You, you, you guys know what I mean. Just get to situations faster and act faster than your enemy can. And then for the repair kit, I personally went for this mainly because I, if I'm tracked out in the open, I do not want to be there a second longer. I want to instantly be able to repair that because I'm most likely going to be using the multi-purpose restoration pack either to already repair my track or use it for the injured crew or fire because if this tank is stuck out of the open it is pretty squishy. It doesn't really have too much armor and it will just get deleted. And I'm running the legendary camo veteran. You guys could obviously run whatever camo you guys would like. I just personally like the look of this camo. 
and that will do it for this part of the review i'm going to go ahead and hop on armor inspector and show you what i mean by how squishy these sides this back and even sometimes the front of the turret yes the turret does have some nice spots where the enemy can't hit you but in other spots it is pretty bad so let me go ahead and hop on armor inspector and show you guys we are in armor inspector and right away i want to start off with saying you could get a lucky bounce in any tank so this tank is no exception you might get a lucky bounce every now and then wherever the enemy ends up shooting on your tank it's all rng based for that but i'm going to circle that orange and red part on the tank right there in the editing process and i'm going to go ahead and click on it right now that orange part and that red part are pretty much the only spots that you will be able to bounce on the front part of the hull so maybe if you angle a bit you'll definitely be a bounce zone automatic bounce zone most tier 9 and tier 10 tanks if they are running pramo might be able to just shred right through that a few spots might not be able to like that one 407 spot that i clicked on can't remember if i can't really find it right now but if you guys were paying attention you saw that 407 spot don't really think anybody is going to be able to pin that maybe the 183 but that's about it and then for the turret like i was saying not that strong at all almost everything on the turret can be pinned except for this part right here this is the part that i was referring to earlier at least i think i referred to it where you might be able to get bounces is this gun mantlet the gun mantlet is pretty big that purple part on the tank right there if anybody ends up hitting that you will get a bounce and obviously if you hit the gun it will not go through but that is like these are the only spots right here i'm going to go ahead and circle them where you could possibly just get a pin everywhere else is pinnable and that's why i say this tank is not a upfront brawler like i said earlier it is a heavy um you mainly want to go with the mediums flank around and hit the enemy from behind or do little sneaky flank rounds and stuff like that with your team i do feel like this is more of a team-based tank you have to rely on your team more because this armor right here is not that reliable at all. Let me go ahead and show you guys the sides and back real quick. Right here, anybody can HE that. I've HE this spot so many times. And actually, let me go here. If you guys are here and you pull out like this, you're shooting an enemy that is over in that direction. And say, I'm an enemy tank. I pull out. I could easily HE that part of your tank. No problem. If I'm for easily over 500 or 1,000 damage. You guys want to look around. Use that situational awareness. Look at the mini map. Make sure there's no enemy tank in front of you and you're just looking this way for, in order to take a hit. Make sure nobody's there to just HE the crap out of this part of your tank. But if we put that back, the sides, like I said, everybody is going to be able to pin them if you're looking at this 30, 50, 52, 127 maybe a lucky bounce there but i doubt it look at the back it's 20 50 30 it's it's not looking good you you get he'd from anywhere from the sides and back pretty much the front is the only spot where you might be safe at at the least and even then it's not that reliable like i said earlier the armor is not that great on this tank at all the gun depression you do have eight degrees of gun depression right there so if you do end up getting up on a hill be able to poke out get the three shots out the enemy might be able to bounce that upper plate and hit your gun mantle you might want to wiggle your gun around a little bit like this obviously like before i'm going ahead put a black screen there so it's like you're going up over a hill and this is the perspective of the of the enemy and you are the amx 50b most likely going to be able to bounce this red part here and that orange part and obviously the gun mainly and the gun so you want to wiggle your turret a little bit after you get the shots off and obviously once you empty the clip or empty whatever shots you have that you can get out pull back in the cover and wait for that 18 plus second reload until you could either pop out again and get another clip out or a reposition to your team in a system and like i said this tank is mainly a team-based tank you have to rely on your team a lot and i recommend staying with your teammates while you are in this tank because if you're not you could get singled out and easily deleted from the game as i have found out the hard way also it is a heavy m like i have been saying so much mainly want to go with your medium tanks and you guys will see that during the three replays i have for you today and speaking of the replays without further ado let's go ahead and get right into those 
for this first game, it was actually one of my first times playing the AMX 50B in a while, so I did kind of forget how to play this tank. So I did end up pushing the heavy side, but it ended up working out because the entire enemy team decided to push the left hand side the medium way. So I was able to go ahead and flank around the enemy and get some clips in and some snipe shots. And that is how I did advise you to play this tank in one way, flanking around the enemy, sneaking up behind them, getting clips in, and yes, you could sometimes snipe in this tank, but I wouldn't completely rely on that. But right away, I did push over to base A, seeing if I could spot anyone, but I saw the IS-4 over there, so I figured no one would be pushing this side, and I get into the base trying to cap it out. I keep my gun pointed that way, seeing if anyone would be spotted so I could get some shots off. There's the Leo one. Unfortunately, Crate was in the way. I wasn't sure if I would get the shot, but there's the IS-4. Get one shot into him. Can I get the second? No, he just manages to get behind cover. But at the same time, I do cap out base A. Still keeping my gun over there, seeing if I could get some shots off, but I cannot. So I go for the full reload, decide to flank around, and there is our Kronwagen pushing up heavily on the enemy team, spotting the enemy AMX and a crap ton of TDs. As you can just see, the entire map just blew up right there with red but there is the waffle tractor load he get a very nice shell into him load another one get another shell into him he does hit me in return but that's okay because i'm gonna clip him out in one clip he was full hp and just got deleted only getting one shot into me so that was that was a very good clip if you guys do load he and you are managed to get all your shells off you could do a crap ton of damage as you can see right there and right here like i was talking about earlier you see that side of the turret he is facing the other opposite way and I could pin him with HE. Unfortunately he turned his turret in time and I was not able to but I do track him in place and I get another opportunity to take him out by shooting him in that turret spot that I told you guys about. Always be wary of who is in front of you but in this situation he was kind of surrounded so he was kind of screwed no matter what but still be cautious of that. And as I could said earlier with the full reload this tank is team dependent so I'm Waiting for my team to push up and when I'm almost fully reloaded before I even push up and I'm going to make some bad trades here. I got hit by the E75 and also that E4 which did hurt a lot. I'm pretty much a one shot to almost everyone on the enemy team if not a two shot but I do end up taking that, that E4 and I get hit by Leo. I quickly snap over to see where he's at and I'm quickly moving into cover. Luckily he ends up, well not luckily, I accidentally end up blocking the gorilla and he gets hit but luckily we are able to get in cover but in time before he ends up taking out one of us and now that i'm fully reloaded and i pretty much know where the rest of the enemy team is at i feel confident enough to push up because there is our well there was our mouse in the fosh 155 mainly distracting the enemy so i could probably sneak around and get a clip i was thinking about rushing in there but i knew that was a bad idea because the leo one is still over by a to my knowledge instead i back up and i decide to use this mounted area as cover and use it as gun depression as you saw there i got a shot on that t62a for a second i thought he was going to push around however the gorilla managed to get a shot off before he was taken out and the fosh took out the t62a in return I only have two rounds left in my clip, and there's the Leo one. Luckily, our Fosh is still here. He has one more shot left in his clip, so if we manage to hit all of our shots and they pin, we will be able to take him out, and there we go. We took him out of the game. I shot the Fosh shot, tracked him in place, and then I shot him again, taking him out of the game for the win. There we go. The first class, 4,919 damage. Decent, well, okay-ish credits, and we get the top gun. I believe we are on top of the leaderboard, but in that battle, I pretty much demonstrated how to play the tank and showed you guys exactly how I told you how to play the tank earlier use the tank as a flanking tank and stay with your team because this is a team reliant tank I did not push up unless my team was there to back me up and when I had to reload I stayed in cover around my teammates so I would not be rushed and I only pushed up when my teammates pushed up so I played the tank pretty much how exactly how I said to earlier and for this game if you're paying attention I let my team know that I was pushing on the right hand side with my medium tanks because this was after a little bit and I actually found out how to actually play the tank pushing it on the medium side because this is a heavy up like I have been saying and in this game I do rush into the center kind of a bad idea looking back at it in case anybody was literally just sitting down that other way just waiting for me to do that and just nailing shots into me but I do push up trying to see if I get a shot into that whole read looks like I am just able to and I'm not sure if I can take them Yep, we do take him out of the game, and we are going to stay in the cap since we almost cap it out already. 
might as well get that base capture and start getting a lead on the points. But there is the super conqueror he did push up, and we did trade shots. But no, I have to push back at the cover because I have that 18 plus second reload. So I'm just going to stay here, and our E100 does push up, and I know if the Super Conk did decide to push me, my team would have lit him up. But since I'm pretty much almost reloaded and my team is getting shots into that Super Conker, I decide to push up and focus this T54 E1 because he is an auto loader and he is pretty deadly like me if he's able to get a clip out. But I do end up mainly trading with them. I traded two shots with him, and then he tried. He shot the ML2, and then the ML2 did take him out of the game. And I am going for the full reload again. And it looks like the rest of the enemy team did push base A as they captured it. And there are two of them spotted over there. So hopefully my team does push the right hand side. Because I'm going to go ahead and just go straight towards this middle area where base B is at. And hopefully catch them by surprise and end up flanking them. Getting nice clips into the enemy. There's the FV4005. And I can definitely clip them out right here so I'm gonna push super aggressive and super fast just to get the damage in and get a deadly tank out of the game there's one shot he does get a hit in return he fires again misses and I take him out of the game and I might as well just unload that last shell into the E75 and use this FV4005 S cover as he's pretty much as tall as me as I keep my as long as I keep my turret behind his turret E75 should not pin me but he pushes in cover to where he cannot hit me so I push up over here, wait for the full reload, load HE, see if I can hit the Kronwagen, take a shot, don't know where that hit, but I take another shot, taking him out of the game, only doing 4 damage though, and I switch back to AP and take out that E75 for the win, and the top gun as well, and there's the end result, it's only a second class, but I believe that game really showed you how to effectively play this tank, and there's the 3600 damage, my bad, and top gun. I believe we are top or second on the leaderboard in this game. There we go, we are on top. But that game also demonstrated how you should play this tank. It is a heavy um. Mainly want to push the medium side and use your teammates. As I have been saying, this tank is heavily team reliant. Well, not heavily, you could kind of play it solo, but it is mainly team reliant for that long reload and how squishy you are. And for this game, looking at the lineup, it looks like almost the entire enemy team is going to be pushing base A. So I decided just to push base with A as well. But I'm hoping most of my team does push the main route while I go over to this side route. This is how I have been playing this map recently, and it may surprise you on how I play this. If you guys are in a mobile enough tank like I am in this AMX 50B, it's not that armored. I would recommend a mobile armored tank, but this will do. I usually push up super aggressive into this enemy area to where I could spot the enemy team, and hopefully my team is over by base A in time to where they can get shots on the enemy. And I'm already almost unloaded my entire clip. There we go. We unloaded our entire clip into that object. Now, I'm, now I have to push into cover, and you guys might be thinking, you made a huge mistake, what are you doing? But no, my team is already here supporting me. There we go. They're already getting shots into that object, and I am almost fully reloaded. I'm going to have to focus this E5 since he is being super aggressive and I can most likely clip him out. There's one shot. There's two shot. There we go. We can definitely clip him out. Take him out of the game. And the object is now one shot. I have to push him and get my turret right in front of his face or else he will be able to pit me. But there we go. The Conway, I believe that was, ends up taking him out. And I'm going to focus this Conqueror as it looks on the mini-map. There are no enemy tanks pushing up behind me right now. I'm going to get one shot. And can we get a second shot? Yes, we get a second shot in a high roll 500. I check on that FB4005, make sure he's not pushing me. Our tortoise does push up, I push up with him. But instead of focusing that conqueror, I focus that WZ120. Since he is a one shot for me and he was out in the open, I was able to take that shot on him and take him out. And there we go, the tortoise took out the conqueror. Two tanks right out of the game. And that just shows you how to prioritize your targets. Always focus on the low HP tank first. So he so you could just get a gun out of the game i push up and that death star surprised the crap out of me i was not paying attention to the mini map at all and he got a nasty shot into me luckily it was not hash and he did not do any more damage and i do manage to get one shot into him but that was a super bad trade and i decided to back up and let my team go first kind of as a hit pull let them take the hits but also so i could use them they could take a shot they pull back i pull up and i clip out the enemy just waiting for the enemy to shoot and our team took out the Death Star and the FB4005 as I got two shots into him. And all that's left is the Super Conqueror. So it's, I'm going to play pretty careless right now. Still using the Tortoise as cover because I am a two shot for him. 
Now I'm still waiting for that reload. He gets a shot into me and I am reloaded. I get one shot into him and the Conway got a shot into him, but I end up taking him out for the win in this game. And there we go, 4,747 damage, first class. Okay, his credits, three tanks destroyed. And I believe we will be on top of the leaderboard for this battle. But hopefully that gameplay and the other ones that I showed you guys really showed how to play this tank effectively. Yes, you can still play it frontline like this game showed. Just mainly team relying, like I've been saying, rely on your team. Make sure you know where your team's at and don't just push in super aggressive like I did there. That could have gone so wrong, but luckily it did go right because my team was there to support me. Also, that second game where I told my team I was pushing the right-hand side with the mediums, that is normally how I would recommend to play this tank since you guys have heard me throughout the video tell, tell you that this is a heavy M tank. You mainly want to be pushing with the mediums and also rely on your team like I did the second battle. In the first battle where you flank around and flank the enemy, get clips into them and just surprise them and cut them off. That is how you play the tanks in those three battles. Perfectly demonstrated how to play that. Yes, you could still play it super aggressive, but also careful at the same time and be smart of how you are pushing. But overall, I do believe this tank is worth the grind and in the right hands. It could be super OP just like any tank in the game. So yeah, if you guys are wanting to get this tank, are you finding out if it is even worth the grind? Yes, I do believe it is. Or even if you guys are just here to find out how to play the tank, I hope those three battles definitely showed you guys how to play this tank super effectively. So if you did end up liking the video, smash the like button, leave a comment, your favorite part of the video, or anything in general down in the comment section below, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're always notified when I upload a new video. That being said, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. How does it feel to breathe on your death?